Hi guys, Mark here with Walter's World, and we're in Rome, Italy, one of the most popular places for people to go to study abroad. And today we're going to talk about is the five things you're going to love and hate about studying abroad. Now, um, I'm a bit old to be a study abroad student, however, I have been a professor of many study abroad students, and also when I was younger and, and had hair and was significantly thinner, um, I studied twice, when I was in high school, I studied in Australia and Finland as an exchange student. Uh, when I was doing my undergraduate degree, I did a semester in Argentina and I studied in Austria. I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Illinois in the U.S. and I studied in Argentina and Austria. And then actually I did my master's degree in Germany and I did my PhD in Portugal. So I do know a little bit about studying in other countries. And I want to share this advice with you. So here are the five things you're going to love and hate about studying abroad. Oh, hello. And here's one of the things you love is when your little kitties come with you when you're old and gray like mine. Can we go see mama real quick? <laughs> I know. What? But this is just the love and hates, okay? So let's start with the bad news, the things you're going to hate about studying abroad. The first thing, if you're going to a country that requires a visa, going through the visa process, and, you know, I've had to do this in Argentina and Portugal and Germany, and, you know, there's nothing like wasting a whole day at an embassy or a consulate or at the foreign office getting your visa to be able to be there for more than 90 days. It is a pain in the butt, okay? Luckily, most of the study abroad programs these days, they help arrange the visa so you don't have to deal with that issue. If you're doing a master's or a PhD, a lot of times that's all on you. But for undergraduate stuff, usually your visa, the school will help take care of that, okay? The second thing you're going to hate about studying abroad is finding accommodation. Where am I going to live? Am I going to have dorms? Am I going to get an apartment? Am I sharing with something? somebody? Am I going to live with a family? I've done all of them, guys. And it's really hard, and if you're going to be showing up in a country without a place to live, it can be also a little scary, okay? It gets you a little worried to start it off with. Most of the time, if you talk to the Erasmus office or the study abroad office where you're going, they will help you find accommodation. Many universities help their students find stuff, so make sure you go and you ask your study abroad office or your Erasmus office in your home university for help and get in contact with that study abroad or Erasmus university where you're going and see if they can help you. If no one finds anything, you know, look online. There's a lot of uh, study abroad forums to help find places to live in different cities around the world, okay? Number three on the list is you're actually going to have to study. Professors these days do not really give study abroad students much of a discount anymore. You're actually going to have to study. Um, I've been teaching, I was teaching Europe for 10 years, um, and you could see how the professors start not giving up points to the study abroad students. They actually had to work for it. And now that a lot of, basically a lot of grades now are based on uh, teamworks, you actually be working with locals and their, their grades matter to them. You might be able to say get pass fail, but they can, okay? So you're actually going to have to study for the exams, for the projects, all kinds of things. It's not just a walk in the park. It's not just fiesta, fiesta, fiesta the whole time while you study abroad. You're actually going to have to do something. I know, it's horrible, isn't it? Number four of the things you're going to hate about studying abroad is getting sick abroad. Guys, it's bad enough getting sick at home in your home country, but when you're abroad and you don't know the language, you don't know where to go, it can be a problem. Even if you have people that speak your language and their language, um, I actually got impetigo, which is like a waterborne disease in third world countries when I lived in Lithuania. And I went to the doctor and they said, okay, yeah, you just put the medicine on the on your chin and you'll be fine. I'm like, oh, okay, so I just slathered it on. You know, it's like a waxy thing on my chin basically and uh, you know it doesn't go away so we go back a couple weeks later and I, I see the doctor and she goes no 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 I'm like what she's like no you're only supposed to put a little bit on here I'm like oh I didn't know that because I just got put it on my chin so these little things you miss out same thing happened when I was in Finland I broke my collarbone skiing when I was studying there the paramedics had a, basically a two-hour conversation with my chaperones and all the chaperone told me was take these for pain yeah, they didn't tell me it was one for every 24 hours. So after I popped three in about six hours, I was like, loo, 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 loo. guys, take a moment. We're getting sick over there. Sucks. Make sure you have the insurance, and make sure that you know if you have any health issues, talk to your doctor before you go to make sure that you know, they can tell you what hospitals you should check out. Okay? And number five, honestly, the worst part about studying abroad is going home and saying goodbye to the people you've met. 
Because you'll meet people. It's a situation you'll never have again in your life. Where people from all over the world are studying together. You are there and you become part of something. And the moment you get on that plane and fly out, you say goodbye to them for the last time. You may see them again on a reunion or something like that. But it's never the same. And that feeling of heartbreak that you're leaving. Remember when I lived in Australia, my, uh, my advisor there, my counselor there said, Mark, the day you leave will be the worst and best day of your life because your heart will break from leaving these friends you made, but your heart will be so happy because you're going home to see your friends and family. And it is so, so true. That's for Mr. Wright out there, okay? Now, those are the five things you're gonna hate about studying abroad. Well, I'll give you a pin. And so, let's review. The five things you're gonna hate about studying abroad. One, getting your visa. Two, finding accommodation. Three, actually having to study. Four, getting sick while you're studying abroad. And number five, Da, 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 having to say goodbye and going home. So, one of the things you're going to love, because guys, believe me, the study abroad experience is worth it no matter what. And the, month, the cost, the time, it is worth it because it changes you and it's an amazing experience. Whether you're going to Singapore, Saigon, or Shanghai, well, let's see, something else is not an S. Buenos Aires, okay? It's a great time. Now, one of the things you're going to love about it, the first thing is it's fun. Fun, 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 fun. Whether it's parties, meetings, Doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Studying abroad is fun because it's something so different. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm gonna love about studying abroad. It is fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. I wouldn't have done it so many times as I've lived in nine countries because it's fun. Okay, that's the first thing. I'm gonna love. The second thing you're gonna love about it is the traveling. Now I know I said the travel is fun, but the traveling itself. When I lived in Argentina, I decided you know, every other week I'm gonna go travel someplace else. So I went to Santiago, Chile, and I went to Iguazu Falls, and I went to Rio. I got to see all of South, like most of South America. When you're studying abroad, you should go take that chance. Don't just sit and drink and party all the time. Take some weekends and go see some other parts of the country you're in, neighboring country, cities, whatever. That is what makes studying abroad such a great time. It gives you a chance to see the world, okay? The third thing that you're gonna love about study abroad, and this is what you're gonna tell your parents, so they say yes and they foot the bill. Your improved job prospects. Guys, having studied abroad many times, every interview I've ever had goes into, wow, you studied here, here, and here? Tell me about it. We didn't even talk about the job. We just talked about my experiences abroad. And that's what you can do. You can talk about your experiences abroad so you can share that with the company. Because now in this more globalized marketplace, that's what you're going to have to have. You need to have these international experiences to make yourself more well-rounded in the workplace. Number four, the people and the friends that you're going to meet. Guys, the locals, you you're make great friends, other exchange students or Erasmus students when you're traveling around, you're going to meet them and you're going to make friends for life. I mean, you're going to have friends. Guys, I still travel around. We're in, we're in, uh, we're staying in Vicenza. We stay with friends of mine that are there. That's all for you, you know, uh, Fernando. And when we're in, you know, when I go to Milan, I stay with students there. I see them there. I see students. I see fellow students, friends of mine from all over the world. We go and see because we have friends from all over. And that's one of the great things about study abroad is making these friends from all over the world that you can keep in contact with and see all over the world. And the fifth thing you're going to love about study abroad is it's going to broaden your horizons. You're going to, your eyes are going to open. You're going to see the world in a different way. Guys, you're going to learn a new language. You're going to understand a new culture. When you see people rioting with, for soccer in, in you know, Ukraine, you'll be like, oh yeah, it's because of this. And when you see people going crazy for curling, you're like, oh, it's the Norwegians because of that. And understand more of the world, speak in a new language, learn about a new culture, and you really do broaden your horizons and open your eyes. So the five things you're going to love about studying abroad are, one, the fun. Two, traveling all over the place. Three, the improved job prospects out there. Huh? There you go, mom and dad. Number four, the people and friends you're going to meet while you're abroad. And number five, broaden your horizons and open your eyes to the world by learning a new language and a new culture. So if you want to learn more about studying abroad, classes you should take, where you should live, maybe you want to learn some languages before you go, or traveling to Europe, we have all kinds of stuff on our website, www.waltersworld.com. And please, like and favorite this video, and we hope you subscribe. Ciao from Rome, Italy.